Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong. Welcome to the back office. We all know the heart is a very important organ in keeping us alive. It works ceaselessly since from the time before we're born till possibly about the time we die, maybe a little bit afterwards. And uh, it operates, you know, under strenuous conditions. You can take a lot of exercise and it does take a lot of abuse. Uh, bacteria apparently that come in via your teeth can attack it. There's all sorts of uh, interesting things your heart has to deal with and ways it can fail. It has valves, chambers, bits and bobs. And uh, you know, I'll put a diagram up on the screen and you can have a look, look at all those intricate workings. So doctors traditionally use these a stethoscope and they pop them on their ears and they listen around. They listen around to see if they can hear what the valves are doing and what the uh, chambers are doing. So the chambers are squeezing and the valves are <laughs> opening up like little doors and uh, they're mechanical mechanical devices really so you can listen to them and they can actually hear them opening and if there's a problem they'll hear that tick tock tick tock time is ticking going to expire soon so I'm going to use a few bits and pieces I'm going to use this stethoscope use this microphone little teeny thing and uh, I'm going to build a sort of digital stethoscope so that you can listen to your heart and record it and then analyze it on the screen and uh, hopefully you'll be able to hear my heart it'll hopefully still be going after i've played with all these uh electricity things let's uh jump into the lab and have a play so if you're planning to build your own digital stethoscope you will need one regular stethoscope i suggest get one on ebay they're pretty cheap you'll probably get one for under 20 pounds I should think. This one actually has two doohickeys so you can listen on this flat drum skin type side or this little high frequency I guess smaller end. You'll also need a condenser microphone in fact you'll probably need two if you want to do stereo but one will, one will be enough I should think. You'll need something like this which is a DC jack in fact this is one I've cut but what I'm actually going to use is one of these. I suggest if you've got them, because sometimes you have them going between a monitor or a PC or from your car radio to your old MP3 player, these are really useful because we're only going to use one end um, so we can keep the other end with the jack on and it's all nicely over moulded so it's not going to break. Plenty length is good. It's about as long as however far away from your computer you want to be using this. Now, there is a complexity here and you don't have to worry too much about it if you're lucky and I shall just show you how to uh, test this. If you're, um, These microphones require power. You can see here's a stereo circuit and if you look at one of my previous videos I've actually made uh, my own microphone and you can see how I did that. This uh, project is very similar to that. So if, you're f if your computer doesn't actually output power you will need to power the microphone and it's only sort of uh, two volts or three volts, something like that, whatever that your microphone specification is. Um, however, I've noticed on my camera, which is a GH4 and the GH3 and my PC, I don't need to do this because there is phantom power on the actual computer. And I'll show you how to do this. So you've got two ways. First ways, if you've got a cut down jack like that, and I'll, I'll zoom in for you, you can have a bit of a closer look. So if you've already got a jack that's been cut down you'll and plug it into your computer, don't let the wires short. But if you take your voltmeter, if you measure between this ground and any of the other pins, so that one will be the left channel like this and one will be the right channel like this, if you see a voltage above one volt, could be 1.2 volts, 2 volts, 3 volts, something like that, then your computer is actually providing phantom power and that will activate and amplify the microphone because there's a little transistor in here that's acting as a, uh, a small amplifier and that's perfect that's what you need similarly if you're using these test between this big bottom one and either of these two in fact each of them will show should show a, a voltage if there is phantom power there and if you've got that, then great. Otherwise, you're going to have to build a little circuit like this where you've got a decoupling capacitor. I didn't draw it right at the beginning. That's why there's a little line there. Probably one microfarad will do. Got half quart, the third of a farad. And then you'll have to bring the power up to, say, a 3V3 via you know, some sort of resistor. You'll get diagrams to do this on the internet, but 
at that point you're probably going to be losing interest in trying this so just keep watching uh, my result first and then see if it's something you want to continue and make yourself so first things first you can get your stethoscope and try to remove the end if the end does not want to remove itself like you can see here it's putting up a hell of a fight you will have to get a knife out one like this and slice it slice it very gingerly down the middle and all of a sudden you'll see it will put up no resistance just one more little bit didn't quite get it all the way through see you can just pull it off like that so you might uh, reuse this tube actually we'll need to reuse some of this uh, it's a shame you have to cut it you'll, you'll decide whether or not you want to keep this part you can bin it if you want now I've actually got some other silicone tube because I don't want to keep making my stethoscope tubes shorter but use the tube off your stethoscope or if you've got some spare silicone tube again you've seen that in my previous videos with a suitable inner wall I mean this is four millimeters I think I'll be able to jam it on all you've got to do is cut a length slightly longer than that basically in fact you can decide how long you want it um, I'm just going to go for about, about an inch. An inch should do. I mean, as I was saying that, I even just I thought of a way of revising my design. But uh, let's let's roll with my original design in my head. It's a problem, you see. You're trying to optimize a design before you've even built the first one. So you end up with that and this open end. And just for full disclosure, this is the first time I'm building this myself. So if I go wrong, then you'll go wrong. <laughs> However, watch it right through to the end and then you'll see if I manage to succeed or not. So all I've done is just push the microphone in. It's that simple. You could see I, I, you know, I, just, I just sort of did it because it's so quick. But yeah, just get the microphone and just pop it in. So the microphone will have to be a little bit smaller than the internal diameter of your silicone so that's going to be something you might have to check when you sort of go on eBay or something and buy the sort of microphone or whatever you've salvaged a microphone from but I'm just seeing if I can actually push it down a little bit more that's it'll just sort of be quite nice and firm if I can and it's not going to go anywhere yeah that works just to show you then up close little microphone pointing straight down so any sound that goes through here is going to go straight into that microphone so groovy I think that's that's pretty much done I'm going to chop the ends here well they've got an option I can either solder straight to the contacts of the microphone in here again or I can chop the ends and join um, let's cut the uh, cable first and then see, see what options present themselves because I don't know what sort of cores and things are going on in there get my side cutters fact I'm going to cut this one with a bit of a healthy length because I might want to reuse it so if you've got this I'm just going to take this cable out and measure it it looks really long let's see how long it is so to my reckoning it's about oh it's nearly two meters long I don't really need this to be two meters long so I'm going to I'm going to cut off about 12 inches of that so that's going to be another another sort of audio project out of that so put that aside won't need that for this project and we're going to just take the ends of this should be a couple of cores and there they are so you can see you've got a red wire and a white wire so those two represent the two channels left and right I'm just going to twist them And that's what we're going to be soldering in there but before I solder anything I need to get some heat shrink so you can use heat shrink or you can use tape depending on what you've got I've got a big old box of it but the best way of buying heat shrink by the way is to go on eBay and then you can get it in sort of really a big old box of various sort of sizes and shapes and colors and things like that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of choose out a nice big bit there that's going to go over the lot when I'm done but that's not going to really provide any strain relief so I'm going to use a much smaller one for the strain relief and we're going to cut I don't know whatever that's like two inches worth I think that should be enough just going to feed that through 
sort of quite a distinct loud helicopter noise above the house. I don't know if they've uh, finally caught up with me. There we go. So I think I'm just going to use one channel for now because I don't really know the optimal way of mixing the two. I'm sort of I'm a bit reluctant to sort of just hook the left and the right to one of these. It, it probably be fine and you'll just get the left and right coming through, but I'm not going to do that yet. But uh, please feel free to comment down below if that's okay to do. I mean, I could just go and look on Google, but you know, if you're playing at home, there's something for you to do. Tinning that common, tinning it right up. We're going to trim it down, but I'm going to trim right to the base. There we go. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. I think red's a nice colour, so I'm going to strip the red and tin that. Unless, of course, ah, there we go. I, I thought I might just over overdo that and uh, end up ruining the red. In that case, I would have gone for the white. We just need to tin that one. <coughs> oh, pardon me. A bit of a frog in the throat today. Tinned all the way. And the white we'll just leave alone. I'm not going to cut it though because I might want to use it in the future. So I'm just going to keep it under the heat shrink somewhere. So I want these both the same length. I'm just going to snip them right there. About a mil. A mil of play. And I'm going to look at this. I'm just sort of. I might try. Silicone technically is heat resistant, so this should be okay to do. But if not, I you know just do the microphone separately. In fact, I'm going to see if I can just squeeze the mic back out. Yeah, it's easy enough to squeeze back out. So I'm going to keep it in these uh, handy jaws. But I have to make sure I keep an eye on that polarity. I don't want to get the polarity wrong. So that's the ground, the minus, and that's the plus. And in fact, I can see on the device itself a small plus, so that's really handy. You probably can't see that on the camera, but there is one there. It's just going to attach our new wires. There we go. Try not to hold your soldering iron on there too long. Because you might just melt the uh, innards of that. You've got to be careful. It is a little circuit board in there sometimes with a little transistor. Very teeny tiny. But that's good. So you can see now, all I want to do is push that in there. And then we'll heat shrink over that for some strain relief. Really, you could probably push that in and then inject some hot glue as well if you wanted to make that super strong and super permanent. I might do that to, if, if and when it ever breaks. I certainly don't want to do it just yet because it just might not work and then that will be a big problem for me or I might later decide I want to hook that second channel up. Now traditionally doctors do listen sort of in several areas so I'm wondering if you could have uh, maybe more than one of these probes running if that had any benefit at all. Be a bit gentle as well when you're pushing the PCB down. You really don't want to knacker that element inside it. Hot air on. I'm going to put the heat shrink on. <laughs> that though, I want the smaller heat shrink first. So I'm going to do a bit of uh, trickery here. the uh, inner layer. Being a 
a bit more cautious now. I don't want to damage the uh, stethoscope drum. have a stethoscope. All that remains I think is just to go over to the computer and have a play. I mean I can just try plugging it into the camera but I don't think we're going to learn anything from that. Let's test this out over at the computer. See you over there. So you can see I'm in my onesie. Um, that's because it's night time. I wanted to be really quiet to run this test. I've located an area of my chest where it's picking up the heartbeat quite clearly. You can probably hear that in the background. I'm just going to show you some software. Now I normally use Audacity, but there is a version of Audacity but that's been sort of tailored to make it easier for people trying to do this. If you've got the regular Audacity and you know how to use it, you can do everything you need and a lot more than you can with this Think Labs version. But I'm just going to show you the Think Labs version. So I'm going to just hit record. And I'm trying not to talk, obviously. You can see what happens if I do. <laughs> you heard that? That was my sort of stomach rumbling there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this microphone setting. And you can see I've got the gain right up here. And I'm going to turn off listen. And then, ooh, there you go. That's a lot better. Should make it a lot quieter for you. And then what I'm going to do now is we can see here we can actually change it to a spectrum rather than a waveform and it'll look more hospitalified. There you go. Doesn't that look quite hospitally? Indeed it does. So there you can you can see the uh, the heartbeats here. So you can see there's two and that sort of is because when the heart squeezes, okay, I can take my hands off my chest now and take the probe off. When the um, when the heart squeezes, right, it blows the um, blood I think out the top. So that's part of it. So when it's going boodump, and then I think what the other sound you hear is when it opens up and it sort of dilates, it then the bottom valve is opening and it's just sucking in air. So it's kind of a little bit like those pumps you've seen for sort of you know inflating a lilo at the beach and what you can do here you can sort of enhance these various sounds so I'm just going to give an example at the beginning you can select the region you want and you can do if the microphones are not particularly great quality you might want to remove the hiss or you might want to sort of try to enhance it you can just see it's standard sort of graphics equalizer settings here it's just trying to enhance bits and quiet down other frequencies so let's try enhance heart valves and you can see the spectrum's changed now, so it's removed a certain amount of information. See the top half is lighter? That means there's less noise in it, basically. So let's have a listen. <laughs> that was me talking. And then, of course, there's the bit where my stomach gargled at the end. Let's have a little listen to that, too. <laughs> so it's very easy to sort of hit distortion on this because you're running the microphones on maximum gain but you know it's a lot of fun really and I think if you've got one of these and you could say you can buy these cheaply you can sort of have a listen. Now I wouldn't advise you do this for any sort of medical reason to be honest because the quality is going to be really terrible. It's, it's no way near as good as you using your ears. Your ears are obviously the right sensitivity and this has been adjusted for human ears rather than digital ones. And, and digital ones obviously have to do a lot of noise rejection. I can see that now. You know when I play with this it's really quite difficult. And um, I could sort of give you an example actually. I'm just going to shut this down. 
the microphone is just sitting on the desk and I'm actually even going to sit it face down which would be the sort of quite noisy I'm just going to record for a moment to see what happens see it's totally flat it's totally flat because it's it's good that's what you want a sort of response like that but if I put it on my chest you see that that's all noise the human body is just making a cacophony of sound all of the time. And it makes sense in a way, right? Because you've got blood flowing through vessels and veins and little things and your stomach's gurgling away and these sort of fluids and your lymph nodes and all of your stuff is all working away, creating a heck of a lot of noise. So that's what it's doing. It's picking up all those. And you might be able to sort of switch it to this other mode and go around, you know, trying to listen to things like can you hear your jaw working and stuff like that so yeah have a probe have a play if you've done this um, yourself please let me know comment down below um, if you that way inclined like and subscribe and as ever thank you for watching